Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Behind the Dice podcast. And yes, it is episode two. We made it. We did it. We are here. Episode two of the Behind the Dice podcast. That's right. Really exciting stuff. Hi, I'm Matt from Behind the Dice. I'm so glad that you are listening to the podcast. And as I said before, it is episode two. We are rolling. Thanks for those who uh, listened to episode one. Hopefully you liked it, and hopefully you like what's going on here at Behind the Dice. So, before we get into our topics for today, I would like to take care of some... Some uh, simple housekeeping here. Just a couple things that I'd like to hit on before we get to these topics. First, uh, Twitter questions. Yeah, so I would love to make Twitter questions a part of the show. So if there's anything you are curious about or anything goofy or or interesting that you want to ask, please ask me on Twitter and I will feature it on the show I can name drop your Twitter handle and yeah I would love to make a part of the show so if you have any questions and you want to ask me anything please mention me in a tweet or DM me and I will make it part of the Behind the Dice podcast speaking of the show which is a connected to my YouTube channel again just behind the dice oh by the way my Twitter is at behind the dice no caps no spaces so make sure you find me there but speaking of YouTube I think I finally came up with a schedule a schedule I would like to do um, that hopefully I can keep up with as we get into the spring and the summer. Being that I'm the only host of the show right now. I can kind of stick with this schedule hopefully. I would love to make the podcast on Mondays. I would love the podcast to be released on Mondays. So as of right now that's what it's going to be. Podcast on Mondays. If anything changes I can uh, let you guys know on Twitter. Again at Behind the Dice. No caps, no spaces. So yeah, look out for podcast episodes on Mondays. I will keep you updated on Twitter. Um, And then later on in the week, I would love to record, well, not really record, uh, release uh, other videos. Look for those around Thursday. Again, I will keep you guys updated on Twitter at Behind the Dice. Speaking of future videos, I am going to be starting a new weekly top 10 series that will be going on for four weeks. At least this set of videos will be going will be four weeks long. Um, and yeah, the theme for this top 10 series is my favorites. For example, the first one I am going to release, is are my top 10 favorite Star Wars Destiny characters. And I will go through, as the weeks go by, I will go through things like my top 10 upgrades, top 10 supports, top 10 events, things like that. So make sure you look out for that later on in the week, hopefully around Thursday or Friday. Again, I will keep you guys updated on my Twitter at behind the dice. So yeah, um I believe that is it for all of that. Now, on to our first topic and I, I know that I'm kind of behind on some of this stuff. That's just because I I started this podcast last week, so some of this stuff might be common knowledge. But my first topic Speaking of favorite upgrades, my first topic will be focused on 
Maul's lightsaber. It is a legendary upgrade from the Legacy set. And it has turned into one of my favorite one of my favorite cards in the game. Why? Well, first of all, it's just stupid powerful. If we're looking at the dice sides here, it has four damage sides. Three modifiers and a two melee. A two modifier, three modifier, and four modifier. And on the surface, you can say, well, there's a lot of other cards like that that have crazy damage sides. But... A lot of the time, they're very expensive. Well, Maul's lightsaber, being only three resources, isn't, at least for right now, isn't crazy expensive because I feel like in the game right now, at least what I've noticed when I've played, I've been able to get more resources now than ever before. I don't know if it's because of certain cards. Um, I just feel like I've been getting a lot more resources lately and I've been able to play more expensive cards without, you know, really having to run out of resources each turn. And Maul's Lightsaber is only th only three resources, which is completely affordable. Especially if we're doing swapping or some cards that you play, upgrades for free. I think Maul's Lightsaber is very affordable. It's blue character only. No redeploy. But if you look at these other legendary upgrades from previous sets, there's just there's a lot of four cost or even three cost upgrades where there's no redeploy. But their damage sides will be resource costed or 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 there'd be some play restrictions on it, making them making them not very good. Maul Saber, that's not the case. No damage side costs a resource. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is that this particular upgrade is affordable. It's not one of those upgrades where it's impossible to play it. Now, let's take a look at Maul's lightsaber's power action. If an opponent has no shields on all of their characters, roll this die into your pool. That's nuts. Because one thing I've noticed about any card that has to do with Darth Maul is that it removes shields. There's plenty of cards out there now that remove shields. And basically, if, if you're running a melee damage heavy deck, you, you just have the potential to do incredible damage with this card. So you resolve the dice with the card it's attached to. You know, if you have that four modifier out there, you're doing, what, at least five damage. You could be doing up to six damage, seven damage. And then you can roll it out again with your other character with melee damage. And you're just doing crazy damage. You can be doing 10, 11, 12 damage in one turn because of this card. It's crazy. I mean, I I adore this card just because of its playability. Like, now this card, this card has a place in most blue, ca well, I would say all blue villain melee decks. It, it, I think it should, I think it's become just a standard in these decks now because it's, it's so playable. You know, I, I, I can't stand some of these upgrades, especially, you know, legendary cards are guilty of this, where it costs four resources to play the card. And then, like, two of the one or two of the damage sides is a, re it's like, is a resource cost. It's like, how, how do you play? The only way you play those cards is if you have to fill your deck, fill, fill up slots in your deck with cards or use a battlefield or something where it lets you play it for free or... Maybe you have Seth Holocron if it's an ability, or Rise Again or something, which costs five resources anyway. Like, 
I don't know. I, I, I feel like cards like that aren't very playable. Maul's Lightsaber, I think, is one of the best upgrades in the game right now because of its you know sheer playability, which is what I feel a lot of upgrades have been missing, specifically legendary upgrades. So, for example, um, I was running... What was I running? Oh, I was running, like, the lamest version of Vader Raider this week. Like, it's just, like, it has, like, all the typical suspects in there, like, feel your anger and high ground and, you know, stuff like that. What the, 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 the same stuff you see in all blue villain decks. And, you know, it, it was lame. I just kind of threw it together in like 30 minutes because I was in a rush. Um, mainly because I've been I've been uh, showing some people how to play the game recently, some new players. So I just kind of wanted to introduce them to different kinds of decks. So I brought in a Vader Raider deck. It was pretty lame, though. But I put Maul's Lightsaber in there thinking, all right, let's just kind of see how this works. It was my first time playing with the card. And... So, I eventually get it on Vader. You know, I, I had like five resources at the start of that turn. I don't know how. Like, I, I just feel like it's been, we're able to get resources now. Like, more resources now than ever before. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just I've changed my style of play. Maybe that's why. But I feel like I don't really have resource issues anymore. Um, but anyway, so I put Maul Saber on Vader. Okay, let's see how this goes. Which, by the way, I feel like whenever I use Darth Vader, you know, Papa Vader in this game, I I never hit the two damage sides on him. I'm like, man, I don't know what it is, but I can never roll good with him. But anyway, so I roll out Vader. I rolled both my... Uh, two melee damage sides. So I guess this time I did roll the sides. And then I rolled out the plus three melee modifier on Maul Saber. And, you know, my opponent's just like, oh, great. So basically, so boom, seven damage. He had no mitigation at the time. Uh, he probably he either, I think he used some of it before. This was more towards like middle, like the second half of the game, more towards the end. So, I do 7 damage on him. Wow. You know, sheesh. Um, okay. That's great. That modifier really helps. Next thing I know, I realize, wait a minute. He doesn't have any shields. You're telling me I can roll out Maul Saber again? As a power action? So, I do that. I roll out my Tusken Raider. I think... What, the Tusken Raiders, one of his melee sides is a three, right? Yeah, it's a three with a resource cost. So I roll that out with the plus four melee damage on Maul's Saber. I do seven more and kill his character. I'm 14, it was kind of overkill, but 14 total damage in one turn. That's just nuts. And if your opponent doesn't have mitigation, they are screwed big time. This card is a game changer. I took out my opponent's character in a matter of what? Two, three actions? Four actions? Yeah. And this is only th this only costs three resources and none of its sides cost a resource to resolve. That's crazy. I am in love with this card. Maybe it was because of that particular game, but based on what I hear around this community is that people love Maul's lightsaber. Now, unfortunately, the character of Maul isn't uh isn't as good. <laughs> um well, I'm looking at his card now. He's a legendary which hmm, Okay, I guess that makes sense. 
a two damage side, a three damage side with the resource costs. All right, not bad. Like his dice sides are very similar to Vader, except his three damage side costs a resource. Uh. His ability is, after one or more of this character's character or upgrade dice are removed by an opponent's card effect, you may remove one of their dice. Okay, interesting. Interesting effect, kind of situational. Um, basically making your opponent think about, okay, do I really want to remove his dice now? Because he'll just remove my dice. Um, Maul is an interesting character. 12 for one dice, or die, whatever. 16 for two. <sighs> We're getting... We, we, we've gotten into... When it comes to dice costs, like we've kind of gotten into that... Mm, I don't know what I can pair him with zone. Like 16, eh. You know, like... It's just, you look at Maul... And when you look at the surface, it's like, okay, 16 cost isn't terrible. His dice sides aren't terrible. He has a pretty neat effect. 11 health, not bad. But I just feel like there's this, literally this card with better dice sides, better dice cost, and around the same health. And There's just better versions of Maul out there that you can use. Like... Maul doesn't really stick out. Like, I, you know, I think I made a Maul and Magna Guard deck just so I can try out Maul because I love the character of Darth Maul. Especially after uh, Rebels and all that, which I will get to later. And so I'm playing it. I'm like, like, I'm thinking, okay, Maul, Magna Guard, like, it's not a bad deck. But like, why would I? Why would I not just do Vader Magna Guard? Vader has a better ability. His three damage side doesn't cost a resource. He has two more health. That was just one example. You can pair Maul with fourteen cost. Well, I believe Seven Sister is fourteen, right? But Seven Sister is better paired with other characters, like Tarkin, like Boba. So, maybe in future sets, Maul will kind of have his perfect pairing. But right now, I just, I don't really see, Maul isn't really seeing much play. Which is a shame, because he's not a bad card. It's just, compared to other combinations, just better combinations with other cards, it's just, he's not seeing enough play. Because... I would love to see Maul and Maul's lightsaber paired up. I love thematic decks, which is what I will do to segue into my next topic. Look at that. Look at that perfect segue right there. I don't even think I planned that. So my next topic today is the idea of thematic decks. Now, what do I mean when I say thematic decks? I mean decks that make sense in actual Star Wars lore and continuity. So decks like Luke Leia, or decks like Darth Vader and Royal Guard, or even decks like Luke Ray and Han Ray, because I guess, you know, they met in the movies, yeah. So, yeah, decks that make sense in the context of Star Wars lore and continuity, and not just character pairings, but, you know, upgrade pairings, too. Like I, ju like I just said, Maul and Maul's lightsaber, Luke and Luke's lightsaber, um, Phasma and Phasma's blaster, uh, Krennic and Krennic's blaster, you know, things like that. I'll just say this now. I understand that the idea of thematic decks kind of puts a you know puts a cap on the amount of creative decks you can use but so this is just I guess this, this is just kind of me just venting a bit not even venting just 
just talking about how much I love thematic decks, and whenever there's a good thematic deck out there that's, you know, good in tournaments, tournament play, and just very good, it makes me very excited. So, I'm not sitting here and saying, yeah, Destiny should only be thematic decks because that makes sense with Star Wars continuity. No, I'm just saying I would like to see more of them just because it'd be fun. For example, uh, New Luke and Leia makes perfect sense. First of all, they're both elite. And, you know, it's, it's a thematic deck. You know, Luke and Leia are brother and sister. And it's a good deck. It's a very good deck. I love that deck. You know, um, Leia, I think Leia is just a great, a very, very good character in Destiny to begin with. Very solid character. And Luke, Luke has become, one. new Luke has become one of my favorite character cards in the game. So, it makes me very happy that a thematic deck is working in, you know, Star Wars Destiny play. You know, I'm sure people will be like, oh, thematic decks don't matter. It's just a game. It, it shouldn't really matter. But I don't know. It mattered It mattered enough for me to make it a topic in the podcast. And I don't know. I just like to talk about it. I would love to have a conversation about it on Twitter. I'll probably start a thread there. What do you think? What's your favorite thematic deck in Star Wars Destiny? Mine right now is Luke Leia. I think it's a very, very fun deck. What other thematic decks are there? That, uh, oh, Vader Royal Guard. Decent, decent deck. Um, you know, you have the Guardian ability keeping Vader alive. And it makes sense because the Royal Guards hang out with Vader and Palpatine and all that. And, I don't know, it just makes sense in, in Star Wars lore. Like, obviously, like, I guess this is my inner Star Wars nerd coming out. And this is probably just me venting, not venting, but... Yeah. Like Vader Raider. I'm going to sound like such a snob. Like, in Star Wars lore, Darth Vader hates the Tusken Raiders. He actually kills some. So I'm thinking, like, why would Darth Vader be paired with the Tusken? I don't know. It's a good deck, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Like, every time, like, I... <laughs> I and this is, this is probably why I'm not, you know, I'm not as good in Destiny as I should be, is because every time, like, I see Vader Raider, I'm just like, what an odd pairing. I don't know. Like, one of, I think one of the funniest decks out there was uh, New Palp and Gamorrean Guard. I'm like, what's Palpatine doing hanging out with the Gamorrean Guard? You know, three little piggies, three Gamorrean Guards make sense. Oh, what well, one deck I just made actually was uh, Bib Fortuna and Jabba. It's like, those two are buds. Well, not really buds. Those two, you know, hang out, right? It's thematic. I don't know if it's any good. I still need to test it out. I would love if there was a style of play in Destiny where, and I don't know how you would determine this, but could you imagine if it was like thematic decks only? Like, decks that clearly make sense. There could be, a, like, a gray area in there, but I don't know. I think just I think just the Mac decks are fun. You know, maybe you're listening to, th- to this and you're like, why why was this a part of the podcast? Like, it doesn't really matter. You know, you can pair your characters with who you want. But, I don't know. There's just a certain charm to thematic decks. And I'm glad to see that decks like Luke Leia are you know, is doing well because it makes sense. You know, that's why I want I want Maul to be good so I can use Maul's lightsaber with Maul. You know what I mean? It's probably why I'm not that good at Destiny because I think about stuff like that. I don't know. Oh, so a quick tournament update. I believe a regional tournament wrapped up in Connecticut, I want to say. I think it was Connecticut. And yet again, the winner was Boba's seventh sister. 
This is the second week in a row I'm hearing about Boba Seven Sister coming in first place at a big tournament. So, that seems like the deck to beat right now. Boba Seven Sister. Great. I don't even have seven. Like, did you ever... I'll make this a topic, maybe, a future podcast, but, like, what cards out there that, like, everyone else seems to have, like, do you not have? Like, I don't have a Seventh Sister. I don't even have a Seeker Droid. Like, I just never pulled them. One of the biggest crutches in my game is I never pulled a Force Speed. And no one would ever trade their Force Speed, and I wasn't about to drop $50 for a Force Speed on the market. I don't know. That was always one of the biggest cru- uh, biggest uh, blows in my game is my lack of four speed. Which is a shame. But, whatever. Life goes on. That was a little off script. So, let's now move on to our next topic. And we are going to shy away from actual Destiny gameplay, actual Destiny topics, kind of. And we are going to talk about the Rebels finale. What did I think? Did I like it? What does the future hold for the franchise? Rebels. So I was kind of... You know, I wasn't really optimistic about the show at first. I'm like, oh, it's it seems very, you know, kitty. You know, I don't think it's really going to get that serious. We're going to hear, like, kind of weird, like, corny jokes. Which, the corny jokes were all over the series. Like, those never went away. But, man, as this series progresses, my goodness, how good does it get? It, it, it dives so deep into Star Wars lore. And I love it. I absolutely adore this show. So the finale, one thing I thought the finale did well, and I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm not. I if you know me, with movies and TV shows, I don't really like telling people what happens. I'd rather people experience it for themselves. And I'm telling you right now, you need to experience Rebels. For yourself. You need to watch it. Any decent Star Wars fan. I feel like should be watching Rebels. But that's just me. So one thing that the finale did. Again we'll get get into any details. That I thought was brilliant. Was the fact that. They left a lot open. While having a conclusion. Because with a lot of shows or movies, it's either one or the other. Other There's like, there's kind of a soft conclusion, but like, the point of the ending is the cliffhanger. Like, see what I mean? It's like, for that particular story, like, yeah, they they end the, the, the threat or whatever it is, but, you know, the point, it was all leading up to a cliffhanger. Or, some stories don't have any of that, and they resolve the, the problem, and it's done. Destiny, or Destiny, this is a Destiny podcast, and I'm talking about Rebels, but Rebels, <laughs> Rebels, I feel like, did both. Um, it had a clear ending for the time period within the Star Wars timeline it was. You can only have, you can only have a clear enough ending in that time period because uh, Rebels takes place before Rogue One. So, the Death Star wasn't even thought about yet. Well, according to the Rebels, the Death Star, they had no clue that Death Star was around yet. There were whispers of a super weapon, but they didn't, there was no confirmation yet. So, I feel like they ended the story really the only and the best way they could. But, they still left a lot open. And not just for... A series, but for future movies too. Like, I'm very curious to see if there is any Star Wars Rebels related 
characters or whatever in any future Star Wars movies. That would be very, very interesting. But I know that a Star Wars series is being made. We have the new Ryan Johnson trilogy. So we'll see where it goes. If you saw the Rebels finale, you know what I'm talking about. There are many, many, many different ways they can go with this. And one thing I think Star Wars in general does well, better than a lot of other franchises, is keep things open enough to expand on them. Obviously, that window closes more and more when more content is made, but um, Rebels did a great job of that, and I'm very, very happy that the series, the series ended. I couldn't have asked for a better ending to the series. So, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of my little tribute to Rebels. Um, and actually, you know what? I was actually thinking if I should talk about this or not, but I will. A lot of other people have brought, oh, what are your favorite Rebels characters that are in Destiny? And... And, um, sorry, I just got a message. Yeah, so people were talking about, you know, their favorite uh, Rebels characters that were in Destiny. So, well, I took that question, took some time to think about it. Also, what cards in Rebels that aren't in Destiny would you like to see in Destiny? Obviously, you get a lot of Sabines, because Sabine is a nutty character in Destiny. Um, you get, like, Sabine Ezra's, like... See, I never really played with the Ezra card. I just, I don't know. I never really found that perfect pairing with him. But I would say my favorite card from Rebels, as in in Destiny, it has to be Kanan. It has to be. I just, I love his ability. You know, it's just, he was such a good pair with Qui-Gon. Like, I had so much success with my Kanan Qui-Gon deck. Um, also, you can't forget Ahsoka. You know? Um, her pair with Kanan was pretty crazy, too. Um, yeah, Kanan is actually one of my favorite characters in the game. He's not used as much anymore. But at the height of his use in the game... Kanan, the Kanan Qui-Gon combination was very good. The Kanan Ahsoka combination was very good. Uh, what else? Oh, um, Thrawn. It's a shame. It's a shame Thrawn car, <laughs> Thrawn Uncar died so quickly. That's really a shame. I wish it did. I wish it didn't. You know, post errata, all that stuff. You know. Nerfing Uncar basically. Thrawn Car was such a neat deck because they finally made that perfect pairing with Uncar and it was Thrawn, and then like weeks later that combination was gone, and I was very upset. But yeah, Thrawn is a is a pretty fun character in the game. Uh, you know. I just i I'm trying to see like what his new where his place is now again if you know let me know because i would love i would love to see thrawn again in tournament play so yeah thrawn thrawn is a fun character from rebels some cards i would like to see from rebels i guess sith holocron counts right the sith holocron out was that introduced in rebels i don't think so that might be in clone wars Anyway, cards I would like to see from Rebels in in the game. There has to be a Black Saber. There has to be. Like, it, it became such an important part of the show that it, it can't it can't not be in the game. Like, obviously, it would be a legendary card. And don't make it bad, please. I know it's. I know you're gonna end up making it eventually, but please, <laughs> for the love of God, don't make it bad. Because I love that weapon, the black lightsaber. I think that was a pretty common response from people who answered this question. You know, what do you want to see? The black saber. 
Um, I would love to see that uh, that Tie Fighter prototype that was in the Rebels uh, show, the one with like crazy shields and it was super powerful as like a neat support. I would love to see that. Um, I would love to see any of the clone troopers in it, the old clone troopers. Um, because I know they're seen in, uh, the movies or I think just Rex is seen in the movies. Uh, I think in episode six, like I think they confirmed, like there was this actor as like playing a rebel and he just so happened to be older and have a beard. So they were like, yeah, uh, that's Rex. You know, I would love to see Rex as a character. Rex was a neat character. Uh, who else? Hondo's already a character. Um, the ghost is already a so is the ghost a support? Yeah, I think it is. Um, I would love to see an updated Ezra. Like, and I would love to see. Cause like the only Ezra we have right now is just the, uh, like like the, he's like steals stuff, you know, like early like season one Ezra. I would love to see season four Ezra, you know, when he's a more established Jedi and he actually has Jedi skill. I would love it if you if they made a new Ezra, that would be great. Or if they made a blind Kanan, that would be really interesting. So, yeah, I don't know. These are just a couple a couple ideas. Maybe make... Uh, can I say this? Or it might be a spoiler. Do I'm not going to say it. If, I don't want to ruin it for anyone who hasn't seen the show. Um, so, yeah, sorry about that. Again, I don't like spoilers. I guess I did spoil the fact that Kanan gets blind, though. You know what? I'll just say it. I'll just say it. Spoiler alert. Even though I spoiled some things already. Spoiler spoiler alert. So, I mean, just don't listen to this part. Skip ahead. Uh, I was going to say it real quick. Hero Callus. That's what I would like to see. All right. Spoiler alert. Done. <laughs> yeah. So. I don't know. Uh, Rebels did a great job really expanding things in the Star Wars universe. Um, I think it has done nothing but help the game itself, help Destiny itself, with some really neat characters. So, yeah, I would, I want to see them like give up on some Rebels characters. I would love to see more. So, and... That is, that is our last topic for today. We're almost at 40 minutes, I believe. That's kind of the time I'd like to keep it, maybe. Maybe a little longer in the future. But we did it, guys. Episode 2 of the Behind the Dice podcast. (sighs) I love doing this. Guys, first, first things first, I would just love to say thank you to, um, you know, the people who have supported me and follow me here in the early stages of this podcast, of this show, and of the YouTube channel, and on Twitter. I really appreciate you guys. Um, I would love to see this channel grow. So if you like what you heard, please share the podcast with someone. This podcast will obviously be on YouTube, or it will also be on SoundCloud. So... Keep that in mind. Again, thanks to the people who who have showed me support here in the early stages. Um, you know, getting started with anything can be a little rocky. So I like to thank all those people. Again, if you haven't already, be sure to follow me on Twitter. I will keep you updated on future shows, future videos. Uh you know, I would love to start a conversation with you about just Destiny in general or Star Wars in general. Um, so be sure to follow me at Behind the Dice. No caps, no spaces, no underscores. 
So be sure to follow me there. Again, send me your Twitter questions. I would love to feature them on the show. That would be great. And anything else? Oh, and yeah, look out for my top 10 series coming out. The first video will be my top 10 favorite Star Wars Destiny characters. I think that's it. Again, thank you so much for showing me support in these early phases, early stages of of the show. I will be back next week with episode three of the Behind the Dice podcast. So again, to anyone out there who is keep on playing, keep on learning, keep on improving, Because this is a great game and I would love to see it grow. So, have a great week, ladies and gentlemen. I will be on Twitter. So, message me if you like at Behind the Dice. Thank you very much for joining me. And I will see you again next week. This is Matt from the Behind the Dice podcast. Wishing you a good day, a good evening. Thank you very much. Have a good one.